Hey traders, Mike Sir here. In my last video, I profiled Paul Tudor Jones, who in my opinion is one of the greatest traders ever. I've learned so much from him over the past 20 years that I want to share more of his trading philosophy with you in this video. So in this video, I'm going to share 10 trading lessons that you can learn from Paul Tudor Jones. So let's get started. All of us traders and investors have been in a scenario before where we do a lot of due diligence and research on the company's stock. And let's just say we believe the company will do well. But once we buy the stock, the price immediately goes down. And we, of course, think that the price drop is temporary, but the price keeps falling down. Now, we start to feel nervous because in our mind, it doesn't make sense why the company's value is dropping when the fundamentals are strong. But as the price keeps falling, we get more and more uncomfortable and we start praying or we start hoping that the price will go back up. We spend countless energy and hours monitoring and fixated on the stock price. And in the end, most often, the price never recovers back to where you bought it at. So according to Paul, once you feel uncomfortable about a certain stock position, you get out of the trade immediately, especially if it's losing money for you. The simple reason is a losing trade holds you back in terms of making logical trading decisions and it drags your trading down. In Paul's opinion, nothing's better than a fresh start. And as I said in my last video, you can always get back into the trade if you still like the stock. Paul has a saying that every day I assume every position I have is wrong. Now what he means is that he assumes that all his current trades at the moment are wrong and starts looking for evidence that he is really wrong. But what the majority of traders do is once they enter into trade, they look for information that confirms that they made the right decision. This is confirmation bias and doesn't help you in your trading. Only when you can't convince yourself that you are really wrong with your trade positions you can become confident that you're holding on to a good trade. Let me share with you a true story from one of my students' experiences with trading. Now, one day he was in front of his computer monitoring a stock that he just bought. His little daughter comes over and wants to sit on his lap. Now, she starts asking him, you know, what he's doing. And he told her that he put some money into this company who he believed will be the next great company. He told his daughter that he bought in at $20 per share. And even though it was at $15 per share right now, the price was going to go back up. Now, he proceeded to show her the price chart and how it's going to go up to $100 per share. Then her daughter asked him one question that caught him off guard. But daddy, why is the price still going down? You see, even a little girl can differentiate between a price going up or the price going down. Now to be successful in trading is as simple as buying stocks that are going up or selling stocks when they go down. As Paul says, one should not argue with the predominant trend as the odds are greatly in your favor while trading in the same direction as the market. Paul generally never buys more of a stock when the price has dropped after his initial purchase. Now, even though he may like the company's stock a lot and perhaps see it has an opportunity to buy even more shares at a lower price, the market is telling him that he is wrong. So he doesn't like to average down on the losing position and instead what he does is do the opposite, which is average up upon his initial position that shows a profit meaning that as the price goes in his favor, he buys more shares at higher prices. Now, what Paul says is when your analysis is proven right, time to back it up with more of your capital. Before I share more of Paul's trading lessons, please take a moment to like this video. I would really appreciate your support. Now, Paul's trading philosophy is to never take a lot of risk or utilize a lot of leverage. But the rationale goes that if you don't take a lot of risk, then how can you make a lot of money? So what Paul does is look for tremendously skewed reward to risk opportunities. All he does is find a trading scenario where he can skew the reward risk relationship so greatly in his favor that he can take a variety of small investments that if they go according to his viewpoint, it will yield a tremendously big reward at the end. Now, this is where he talks about his asymmetric 
risk reward ratio of five to one that I touched on in my last video. So for example, Paul is always looking for trading opportunities where he can find an asymmetric risk reward of five to one, meaning that he is willing to risk $1 on a trade that if it doesn't work out, but when the trade does work out, he needs to make at least $5 on the trade. Now by focusing on five to one risk to reward ratio, Paul can be wrong 80% of the time and still be able to make money. In addition, Paul combines his trading with good risk management, meaning that he doesn't add to losing positions or over leverage himself, then he's almost guaranteed to make money every single year. In the stock market, if there's a sudden price range expansion in the stock, meaning that the stock price trades in a wide price range when it had been trading very narrowly, most traders will try to fade that price move, meaning that they will bet against the price move. But what Paul says is that when you get a price range expansion, the stock market is telling you a clear signal that the market is getting ready to move in the direction of that expansion, meaning that you should buy if there is a price range increase to the upside. Now, the simple reason is that there are buyers at the higher price range, and therefore there's a high probability that they haven't stopped buying yet, and therefore prices can go even higher. Paul never risks any significant amount of money in front of key reports, such as company earnings or economic events, such as the FOMC meeting announcement. Now, the reason is market prices will move sharply in one direction, up or down afterwards, based on the results of these key reports. And if you are holding stocks ahead of time, then you are speculating or gambling on the price direction rather than trading the price. One technical analysis rule that Paul follows to a T is that he gets out of all of his stocks once the prices fall below the 200-day moving average. The 200-day moving average is an average of prices over a 200-day time period. Now, this is a key metric that many people follow as well because it tells traders whether the trend is up or down and sometimes serves as a strong price support or price resistance level. As mentioned, risk management is the most important element in trading, according to Paul Tudor Jones. So he always employs a stop loss order, meaning that if the price doesn't go in his favor and reaches a specific max loss price, then he will get out of the trade with a small loss. But Paul doesn't just use a price stop, he uses a time stop as well. A time stop is where you set a specific time frame for a specific price move or some type of catalyst for example, news to happen, and when it doesn't, Paul closes his trade position no matter if it's making money or not. For example, let's just say that you're expecting a news announcement in the next day or so from a company that could push the stock price higher. Maybe it's a new product to be released, but over the next few days, no news comes out and the price of the stock starts falling. Well, if you were only buying the stock due to the potential news announcement, you should immediately sell your stock because there is no news. You set a time on how long you would hold the stock for. Do you remember in my last video on Paul Tudor Jones where I say that Paul always practices playing defense all the time when he's trading? Well, this is one reason why he diversifies his portfolio meaning that he doesn't put all his capital into one or two stocks or one or two sectors. Now for Paul, diversification is a key part in playing defense and staying in the game for as long as you can. You see, not all of Paul's trading ideas will work as some of his stock ideas will fail to make a profit. So he needs to try trading in different stocks and sectors that would improve his odds of success. Also diversification allows him to practice patience now, if he's only watching one stock or one sector, he might be tempted to overtrade or enter a trade too early due to boredom. In addition, Paul says that if he doesn't see any good opportunities, then he doesn't trade. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to watch other videos where I profile the top traders in the world, please click on the left for another trader profile video and also click on the right for my top trader profile playlist. I'll see you on the next video.